I wonder if the parents of the victims of the Nashville shooting today would still have their children if these trans bills in Tennessee were never a thing. I'm not a parent, but if I were, I'd be real, real mad at the government. I'd be real, real mad at the government. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here with breaking news that the power structure and the Justice Department has tried to suppress. The Nashville shooter, the trans woman to man, who went in to the little Christian school and shot those little kids and shot those teachers. The manifesto was suppressed when it happened and we now have confirmed from insiders it was the Justice Department suppressing it. So the local government is upset about this, the police department, and from sources inside the system, we'll leave it at that, they have leaked to Steven Crowder and his investigative unit, they have leaked to them the first three pages of the document where she talks about wokeness and hating white privilege and all the rest of it. This is being done to then pressure the government itself to officially, of Nashville, release the manifesto, because it's reportedly huge, and see how this monster was brainwashed and poisoned by leftist propaganda. Reportedly from the sources, she was a total brainwashed leftist on a bunch of psychotropics that love BLM, you name it. Steven Crowder has the first tranche. We're told more is going to be coming. It's exclusively at jonescrowder.com. If you go there, you can go and become a subscriber and see all of Steven Crowder's shows, all his material, all his info. Now, he's already put out the pages, but if you want the analysis and more breakdown, that's over at the Mug Club and over uh, at the great folks at Rumble. He also is going to be posting it to YouTube as well. But if you want to support the broadcast and become a subscriber and also support what we're doing, go to jonescrowder.com and sign up to get my show over at the Mug Club, Steven Crowder's, the Hodge Twins, and so much more. But this is big. The system is trying to suppress it. And they're going to be very, very upset that this has now come out because it flies in the face of their narrative and shows how the anti-white brainwashing leftist Marxist agenda is creating these type of poisoned minds. Again, it's all right now at Infowars.com and, of course, at JonesCrowder.com. And Stephen Crowder is going to be covering it all live coming up in less than an hour. Yeah. Okay. So let's rewind. The Nashville shooting, for those who've forgotten, it was March 27th, 2023. It was... A, uh, a, a radical lunatic, uh, Audrey Hale, who then I believe was kind of turning into Aiden. That's why there was some misreporting. Mm, yeah. Uh, decided to break into, infiltrate, whatever term you want to use, Covenant School, in Nashville, Tennessee, and proceeded to murder in cold blood three children, three staff members. Uh, here's a refresher. Uh, the shooter who the police identified as Audrey E. Hale, saying that. The individual identifies as transgender, entered the building by firing through a side door. There you see it. The shooter walks in, kicks the glass, armed with two assault-style weapons and a handgun. That's according to John Drake. He's the Nashville Police Department chief there. Now, let me be clear here. It's always a tragedy when, when people are, are, are killed, especially when the children here were shot were nine years old. Um, if you don't remember, they immediately tried to transition to gun control before the bodies. Yep. Had even assumed room temperature, which happens all the time. And then the shooting kind of went away, sort of like Vegas, once we found out a little bit more about the shooter. Right. So before we get to the manifesto, which provides you most of what you need to know, here's what we know or what you likely know already. Uh, the shooter was Audrey, Audrey Hale, then becoming Aiden, female to male transgender individual, uh, didn't always identify as Aiden, was kind of going back and forth, yeah. lived at their parents' home, her parents' home, uh, was a former student at Covenant School, a Christian school, was being treated for a mental disorder at that point in time. Uh, Hale, direct message, her former basketball teammate from the parking lot before the attack, the parking lot of the school. And we showed this back then. Yeah. It said, I'm planning to die today. This is not a joke. I don't want to live. I'm not trying to upset you or get attention. I just need to die. One day this will make more sense. I've left more than enough evidence behind, but something bad is about to happen. Signed, Audrey Aiden. That very same day, hours after the attack, the Nashville police chief, John Drake, um, said this regarding the shooter's motives. 
no motive at this point? Uh, has anything discovered in the apartment or house? No, we have a manifesto. We have some writings that we're going over uh, that uh, pertain to this day, the actual incident. We have a map drawn out of how this was all going to take place. Uh, there's right now a theory of that's, that we may be able to talk about later, but it's not confirmed. And so we'll, we'll put that out as soon as we can. So that's seven months ago. Yeah. They've had access. There's Many people have had access. Yeah. There's a theory to what was left behind. At least 20 journals. Okay, there was a suicide note, a memoir. It has been seven months. Why has it never seen the light of day? Especially if this is a situation where the motive is pretty clear, right. as you'll see from the manifesto. And again, we're 11 minutes away from reading it in its entirety. Use the hashtag uh, Nashville Manifesto Mug Club Undercover uh, and blast it out everywhere because we don't know how long this will be up. Right. And by the way, I mean, that day, he's not indicating that there is an ongoing investigation to find out no. what happened. He's not saying we're trying to piece this thing together and gather information. He's saying, hey, we have truckloads of data right now and we have a pretty good theory as to why this happened. And we'll, we'll let you guys. But know he also later. said and we don't know the away. motive. Right. He said he didn't know the motive. I understand he's maybe trying to to guard it and say before we release it, because if he says, hey, we know the motive, the next question is, why won't you tell us? Right. You're talking about now a condition when it comes to transgender where you're not allowed to equate mental health with gender dysphoria. And even when a kid comes in, there's plenty of evidence in St. Louis Children's Hospital when a child would come in obviously exhibiting insane behavior that could be uh, f- uh bestiality all kinds of strange things you weren't allowed to correlate that with what was going on with their gender disorder well, in, in this case we weren't even allowed to cover it by the way on youtube which is why we have mug club we decided yeah, to sure completely divest from youtube yeah you probably have to dump <laughs> yeah. what brian just said but he's he's right but in today's case Oops. We're just saying insanity because this person's writings are insane. Yeah. So the truth. Yeah, we have a straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the Nashville PD also uh, claimed that they were delaying the release until they finished their investigation, which may take up to a year. What are they investigating? The director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said twice publicly that there was no ongoing investigation. So this is very inconsistent. Uh, then we look at federal pressure. In other words, these are all the reasons that you really should have had this. I understand that many of you don't want this. You don't want copycats, but we have them from other shootings. Yeah. We have them from Christchurch. We have when it's white supremacy. The difference is white supremacy isn't taught in schools. Big part of the inspiration here with this shooting is taught as a matter of curriculum. Let's go to some of the pressure that's been um, applied here federally. You have the U.S. attorney, um, Alexander W. Resser, said because of these ongoing investigations, the FBI determined that disclosure of the requested documents could reasonably be expected to interfere with enforcement proceedings and withheld all responsive records under the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, There are a bunch of people who don't want this manifesto being released. Um, There are groups, uh, teachers, some of the parents involved, not all of them saying that they're in uncharted waters. This is not something that should be released. There's a bunch of I don't think we need to list necessarily their reasons. But you better have one heck of a good reason for saying that we think that this would interfere with the enforcement. There is no investigation. There's no investigation. You're trying to get to maybe the bottom. Did they have somebody helping them with some other? But you better have a good explanation. And I hope that people are not so distracted that when this explanation comes out and it's not good because of based on what we've seen, there is no explanation for why you would delay putting this stuff out there other than one. And we called it. And we'll get to that yeah. in a minute. I have a really strong hold guess. Their feet to the fire. The reason they want to hold us back. Keep in mind that at this point in time, the don't say gay was being, uh, was being uh, mm-hmm. sort of right. espoused everywhere. Everyone was saying, Oh, the don't say gay bill. And Oh, they're trying to put pressure on teachers. When you see this manifesto, you will see inspiration directly from what is taught in our schools, as part of the curriculum from the progressive left, people would read this manifesto and have to ask themselves, a lot of people don't know. A lot of boomers, do, wait, 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 what's white privilege? Why is this person so mad about Every school we know is teaching young children that there are, that's why. It would raise some questions that affect everybody, not someone in a neo-Nazi gang trying to emulate Ed Furlong in American History X. Let me go to April 28th, 2023, because we have seven minutes here on this timer, and when that happens, we are going to be reading the manifesto in its entirety. The National um, Police Association filed a suit themselves to obtain the manifesto and uh, also, I believe, the Nashville uh, Police Department's communications. Now, they speculated that the Nashville Police Department was hiding material due to, and they they cited this, this is in 
This is in the actual filing. suit, the yeah. filing, political pressure. Let me read this for you. It says, the FOIA also requested all records, including emails, texts, and other communications to and from the MNPD mentioning or regarding the writings of Audrey Hale recovered, re recovered by the MNPD, because it is possible MNPD has been subjected to political pressure to keep all or part of the writings secret. So to protect what? The, the trans narrative, which for which we were removed, saying right. this person is doing it in the name of transgenderism, which, by the way, is idolatry. You've just turned yourself into an idol at that point to protect people pushing the narrative of gun control, to protect the media who, and by the way, this administration, who has told you that the greatest threat this nation faces is white supremacy. Well, you know, you know what an antonym is? Closest thing to the idea of white supremacy would be white privilege, as far as being taught as a philosophy. We have an antonym. We have antonyms in here for all of the narratives that have been out there being pushed. Let's compare this, by the way. It doesn't exist in a vacuum, and all the references are available. We do this every single show for those who are new and tuning in. You'll see a link in the description, loudwithcredit.com. You have a bibliography for every single show. Yeah. We have the manifestos for Christchurch within 24 hours, Buffalo within 24 hours, Jacksonville 24 hours. Now, all of them expressed, and Christchurch might have been trolling, white supremacist themes. Ah. You see the difference there? Within 24 hours, we had that information. Christchurch going after Muslims, a protected group. The other two going after the black community, which is definitely a narrative that they want to go after. And those were definitely hate crimes if you are going to have a hate crime. Absolutely. These guys were white supremacists going after them. But the one time, not just the one time, the, the latest time that people are being killed for being white. But it's for our safety. Right. It's for our own safety because somebody might copycat. And that also so tells you condescending. Oh, that, they won't copycat to kill yeah. black people or Muslims, though. I, apparently, yeah, right, the copycat right. thing that goes tells away. you that they don't they don't believe that that's a safety issue. Not. They understand that they saw such a small percentage of people, not just in the United States, across the globe, the idea of actual white supremacists that they can release the manifesto because no one's actually going to be inspired to go out and shoot people <laughs> in the name of white supremacy. What we're going to be seeing today, what we're going to be going through today, the manifesto from this Nashville terrorist shooter. Um, it's not a stretch to say that half of students in public schools could be influenced to think this way. Maybe not go out and carry out shootings, but no one in public schools is being influenced or by the media to go out and become a white supremacist. The idea that you could be influenced by teachers to believe that white people are inherently evil, that white privilege is something that is in need of correction, that's not a stretch. They don't believe that white supremacy, when I say they, who do I mean? The media entertainment industrial complex, to be clear. I mean ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, the White House, FBI, DOJ. Most of the online content that you see, certainly all of big tech. That, have I been clear in identifying them for you? Okay, if you have children, shouldn't be reading this. And right now, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm about to direct you exclusively to Rumble slash Mug Club because... They don't want this heat. Manifesto. Dark Abyss. Death Day. March 27th, 2023. Today is the day, yes. The day has finally come. I can't believe it's here. Don't know how I was able to get this far, but here I am. I'm a little nervous, but excited too. Been excited for these past two weeks. There were several times I could have been caught, especially back in the summer of 2021. None of that matters now. I'm almost an hour plus seven minutes away. Can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm ready. I hope my victims aren't. My only fear is if anything goes wrong, I'll do my best to prevent any of the sort. God, let me, God, let my wrath take over my anxiety. It might be 10 minutes tops. It might be three to seven. It's gonna go quick. I hope I have a high death count. Ready to die. Ha ha. Signed, Aiden. Next page. Audrey. Kill those kids. Three exclamation points. Those crackers. Going to private fancy schools with those fancy khakis and sports backpacks with their M dash 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 daddies, Mustangs and convertibles. Fuck you little shits. I wish to shoot you weak-ass dicks with your mop yellow hair. Want to kill all you little crackers again. Bunch of little faggots with your white privileges. Fuck you, faggots. Then we have the schedule. Death day, 6.30, desired. 
It's covered by a sticky note, 7 a.m., get dressed, 7.05 to 8.55. It says, with stuffed animals plus possessions, 9 a.m., eat breakfast at home. The home is encircled in a heart shape, 9.30, pack up special belongings and backpack, test knife core breaker, leave for royal range, gear up plus setup, guns and trunk, final videotape, leave for covenant school. So the schedule isn't necessarily something I need to go through in detail, but we will provide it for you. Um, I wanted to read it by itself without adding any editorializing, but what sticks out at you? And I get it. The word cracker, generally speaking, we're not offended as white people. But the motive is here. Crackers is mentioned multiple times. White privilege is mentioned. Reviling people who are going to private fancy schools. A Christian fancy school. Their daddy with their Mustangs, convertibles. It's anger. It's hatred for white people of suburbia. Which would mean, hey, hey, that might be an at-risk group. Not only do we have a motive, what stands out to me is we don't just have a motive, but we have a specific mode of targeting. We know who was in danger. We know why they were in danger. White privileges. Crackers. And of course, this is an insane person. No one is saying that this is not someone who is deeply mentally deranged. Now, I can't say that that's the case because they're transgender, But I'm going to tell you that someone who's concerned about their anxiety when they are about to go and shoot nine-year-old children, that's someone who's been raised in a narcissistic society where everything you want to feel is okay and more important than the greater good. Yeah. This is the byproduct. This right here is the byproduct combined with insanity and a perversion of an unhealthy mind of participation trophies, of no red pen, of you can be whatever it is that you claim to be, no matter how you were born. This is the byproduct of you were misgendered at birth by a doctor, likely white. This is the byproduct of white privilege needs to be checked and it's time to stand up and Black Lives Matter and billions of dollars in damages that the media said was mostly peaceful and should continue. This is the byproduct of what our children have been steeped in in our public schools and what they absorb through big tech. And it's, it's a byproduct of something that we fight against every day. That's why we have Mug Club. That's why we're funded by viewers like you. Again, the link is in the description where you can tweet it out, X, Instagram. At this point, you can cut it. You can clip it. We just ask that you don't lie about it. And let people know the work that went into this. Because there are a lot of people here who've put their ass on the line. So, uh, did you... Well, yeah, so, I, I don't... There was a community of people at risk... Yes. And I don't want to, I don't want to, you, you brush, you touched on that, but I don't want to brush over that. There's a community of people here that were at risk that were not notified. If a shooter's book had had, I want to kill all the black kids that I possibly can in it, in these black communities, the word would have gone out. Like, hey, it be did careful. every time. Right. Exactly. Be careful. So it's not just that you didn't let us know what the motive was. You actively kept information from the public that potentially could have helped them. Now, thank God, I don't know that we had a copycat or we didn't have something else happen that directly claimed to be linked to this, but that's just good luck, apparently. (laughs) Your job is not to hope that something doesn't happen. Hope is not a strategy, DOJ. What you're supposed to do is say, hey, this person was targeting white, suburban, and read it because of where they were, Christians. I guarantee you, when when more of this stuff comes out, and we think that this is just the very beginning of what we're going to get on information for this, more of this will come out. You'll see that undertone as well, mm-hmm. the Christian yeah. undertone. No, The community wasn't notified. The people weren't said, that, hey, we have to be careful. There's a shooter out here who did it because of this, and I guarantee you this isn't the only place they talked about it either, right? This isn't an isolated incident. And one other thing, really quickly while I'm on this, what God were you praying to? To take your anxiety, you your, your make it into wrath. God, let my wrath be, or my my wrath overtake my anxiety. Whatever the the actual quote, what, what what God do you think justifies this? There is none. I think that's a larger, terrifying. I think a larger question also is: children are trying to make sense of the world, so by definition, they're in chaos a little bit. 
When you have our institutions teaching and normalizing chaos, when they are offering chaos, when there's nothing to more into, when truth is that relevant and truth is basically an inner feeling for every individual that ever existed, you are going to further confuse the already confused. Mm -hmm. And then you have people out there who are already a little bit off kilter or a lot off kilter, and all they have is more chaos to turn to, whether it's on TikTok or in schools or in our institutions. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think you're not surprised by this? Right. There's nothing for them to hold on to. And, and they will say, what, well... Was, but people warned about that. Psychologists who study this had been warning about this gender ideology. Yeah. You're going to confuse people, especially young women. And I know what they young, are going to say. Young girls. Yeah, well, yeah, and I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, yeah, but most of them are not violent. This is a sick... Well, hold on a second. Unless you count the violence against themselves. <laughs> yeah, cutting, etc.